Generic greetings and welcome back finally to Derail Valley. It's been a while, hasn't it? Today's beverage is a nice cup of peppermint tea. So Derail Valley, if you're not aware, is essentially a train driving game, predominantly built for VR. I first played it when it was as a free demo and then subsequently I played a lot of the game when it was first released into early access. However, I haven't really touched it in quite some time, mainly because I was waiting for what was originally called the Hazmat update, but has since been renamed to the Overhauled update. And it's quite an aptly named update because pretty much everything in the game has been completely changed, redone and indeed overhauled for the better. There's now a lot more stuff to do. It runs better, looks better you've got a new locomotive loads of different carriages a new job and license system more places to go new track signage turntables the list goes on essentially it is a new game when you compare it to the previous versions now it's still nearly access so obviously not finished however i have been playing a lot of it since the overhauled update and really very much enjoying it it's just got a lot more stuff to do and the quality of life improvements are massive either way let's play a little bit of the game now obviously i'm not playing this in vr this is the desktop mode which you can play it in quite happily and indeed it has been changed quite a bit to allow you to play it much better in this mode too but I have been putting my time into the VR and into this the reason I'm not doing VR is because it's just a little bit better for you to watch in the desktop mode and also the Rift S microphone is hmm how do I put this diplomatically? Garbage. So let's go and check out the map. We are currently at the farm and you can see there's loads of places to go. Now the map has changed a little bit. Uh, the mainly things like the harbour and town has been expanded and such. But we're at the farm. So let's have a quick look at the jobs. We have three different types of jobs on shore here. We have shunting jobs, which is just in and around this yard, which is a little bit boring. So we're probably not going to do that. We have logistical hall, which is normally just carrying empty cargo units and things like that. And then we have finally the freight hall which I think is probably the one we will look at. So we have two freight jobs at the moment. I'm just trying to drop them so we can see both. And we can see the, well, the both from the farm, which is our location, going to the food factory and town. Now, the problem with both of these is that they're... Oh, actually, no, they're not too bad. This one requires the long license, which I can't, uh, I can't pick it up because I haven't got said license. And the licenses you can actually buy from this new thing here, which is the uh, career manager. So we've got that we can go down and train length you can buy for 10,000 if I take out my wallet we can see that I do have enough money but not really something I want to spend it on anyway we'll cancel that we also have the Log logistical hall missions here which we can't do that one there so it's between these two so we've got logistical hall haul empty cars and this total of five cars my current licenses allow me to haul five cars and use this shunter here there's um i think this is the four types of locomotive you've got the shunter there you've got the six axle diesel i think it is the Six, yeah, six axle diesel and the steam train is oh, actually just three then. It might just be the three. Anyway, so there's those three, but we've only got that one to use. So we've got basically these two jobs here. And I'm looking at this one, the farm to sawmill. The sawmill is only just down there. Oh, sorry, city southwest, but the sawmill's right down the bottom. So we're currently at the farm. We could go all the way down that way through here and then to the sawmill. And it's something I've actually not been to. So I'm thinking that might be a quite decent one to do. Let's go for that. So we pick this one up and we take it to the job validator we validate the job and we get our manual and we'll have to cycle through this so a farm to sawmill and we look we can see it is at fm uh, which is farm and it is b3s so we're just going to jump between here which is probably something you should not do uh, in real life in fact it is something you should not do and i'm going to quickly look for this one so it is b3s so if i put this back i'm going to teleport over here and we can see that it is b3 so this is two and hang on that's two so this will be three is this one three i'm just gonna have a quick look so it's b3s that's correct so we're looking for cars cff seven uh seven eight nine uh, that's 150. Ah, 150 is on the other end. So if we go down here, this will be the right one. And we can see it is CFF789. The problem with that is, as you can see, there's loads of these box uh, the box cars. I think they're box cars. Yeah, it is actually a box car on the other end. So we need to get those out of the way. We can see it is currently not coupled up. So what I'm going to do, I've actually got two locos here. I've got, whoops, that was the wrong button. I've got that loco there. And if I crouch down and go underneath here, no, I can't do that. I'll have to just jump through here uh, we've got another local there as well so what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to use both of them because I want to head out that way. If we check out the, where is it? It is the world map here. I want to head out of the farm. Actually, can I right click? I can right click and have a look. I want to head out this way. So I need to be pointing in that direction. So I'm going to get this locomotive here. I'm going to back it up, connect that out, pull it out of the yard, and then I'm going to use the other loco over there to then sort of go forward, pull back, and then connect up, and now we're actually going in the right direction. So let's go ahead and start this up. So one, two, three for the breakers. Ignition, there we go. We're going to put on the cab lights so we can actually see a little bit better, and we'll check the dials so we can see the brake pressure is going up. Fuel and oil are good, sand's fine, engine temperature is good, and let's go. So we put the direction to back, we'll turn off the independent brake, which now you have. You've got two brakes, you've got your uh, air brake that you'll tie into the overall train to control all of the carriages, and then your independent, which is specifically for just the loco only. So we need to head all the way back and out of, probably not out of the station entirely, but we'll probably end up overshooting anyway. Oh, there's also that loco there, so there's three locos in general round here, so we're actually almost more locos than carriages but it's one two three four five so these five here is the ones we need to carry let's get a bit more speed uh, there we go um, the game, as I said, has been changed uh, for the better in loads of ways, but the main one, I think, the main ones for me anyway, would be the signage. There's now signage on the tracks for not just elevation, but also for the speed. But also, it seems that the speed has been increased overall across the board, so you can just go faster, which makes it a little bit just more fun. Anyway, so we go to here, and we will pass that sign, and that is exactly where I wanted to stop, so that's lucky. We will take out our comms radio, which can now create the vehicle which is currently locked switch and re-rail because you can re-rail stuff so you want to go to left there and then to the right not there and then to there so that is correct so we'll put that back into the cab and then we'll say forward independent off and then we will go get a mouse cord stuck apparently and then there we go we'll go forward so we'll connect onto that, we'll tie it in, and then we'll back up out of the station, connect up the other loco, and then go forward. Now, I could probably leave this loco on the back and use it as a pusher. I think you can I think you can actually tie in the locos now as well, which is fairly cool. Let's just, uh, dunk. You can see the, oh, that was a bit, that actually hit a little bit harder than I really wanted it to. Anyway, you can see these did take up the slack there, and I'm going to go underneath. I will then need to connect these up. So first you need to put that on there. You then need to tighten the uh, connector. You We'll take the airlines and we'll connect those like so and then make sure we go one and then two and then the air brakes should all be tied in back into the loco we'll just teleport into that we can see that the brake pressure is going up in the pipes that's fine so independent off we'll go backwards and then let's see if everything is fine i'm pretty sure i checked over there anyway so it shouldn't be tied in to the other cars but we'll soon find out when i back up and uh, it starts pulling the entire thing and no that is actually staying stationary so that's exactly what we wanted so that's fine as I said, we need to back up out of the station so we can pull it straight through. Um, actually, we can go that way, I think. That should be fine. So we're just going to go for zero throttle there. And we'll wait until we have passed the last marker. And that is getting close. There we go. And then we'll apply the air brakes. And as you can see, it takes a little bit longer to stop. And there we go. That has now stopped. I mean, if we wanted to, we could probably push this all the way. But I don't think that's a good good idea but anyway let's just go for uh, do we actually need to let's put the independent on turn off the air uh, so we don't roll back and I think what we'll do is literally just turn this off uh, and then turn all of the fuses off because we're going to be leaving this where it is so we will uh, disconnect the uh, disconnect the loco and there we go and then we'll take that off we will dis uh, I'll turn off the air brakes or decouple them and then we'll just close these valves up and that's now sorted so we're going to teleport over here and yes just to answer the inevitable questions I am pretty much leaving that loco stranded there that's just how it is uh, let's just turn all this on and start the engine hang on now we go so back independent brake off and then we'll back up. This one has been used a little bit more, so there's probably going to be a bit more uh, wear and damage on it, although the oil and fuel seem to be fine. We are now backing up, and obviously we're going to connect up to that uh, to that load. We've got five cars in total. This thing can can haul a maximum of 400 tons I believe however anything more than about half throttle with any sort of decent 
pretty decent uh, cargo uh, concept. It's just it's it's just a it's a nightmare. It just heats up massively, and this often goes into the into the yellow there. And I'm just going to turn off the throttle, reduce that down, and there we go. A little bit of stuttering now and again. I must confess, it does seem to be. Uh, have a problem there, but it is still in early access and obviously still getting worked on, which is good. But even, as I said, even though, uh, oh, good grief, this is gonna, this is gonna be a little bit of a bump here. Uh, actually, no, that's fine. Let's, uh, let's do that. There we go, and then back up a little bit further. Yeah, even though we've still got these little issues there, it's nothing uh, totally game breaking. And clunk, there we go. Okay, so we'll turn on the independent for now, just so things don't start rolling around. We will connect this up. I don't know. If we need to use one or the other connectors, I don't think it really matters. Tie in the air brakes and make sure that we've opened the valve and then opened the valve. Out of interest, just out of interest, we'll go inside. We can see that the brake pressure is going up. If I go out and to the back here, I wonder if I just, if the, if I go here, if I open that. Yeah, it does seem to release all the pressure. And yes, you can see that flashing. So yeah, you can actually get it wrong. Good. I, li I like the fact that uh, you have to pay attention to where you've got like leaks and that sort of thing. I don't know if in the future they're going to be adding uh, things like wear and damage to the like brake lines and things like that or random events that could cause it to fail, that sort of thing. There is actually wear and damage to your loco, the wheels and the body and you now have to fuel things up and oil them and it's now saved over the game. So yeah, there you are. Uh, I'll switch you over to the comms radio and just go to the left there. So we just go straight ahead and that should be us going out there. So if we check the world map, we can see that we have to head uh, out of the farm through the oil well central and then down to the left completely coming along here past all of this nice river and then take one to the right that is fine let's still check make sure that we are heading to the right location yes it is haul the train to the following location which is the sawmill so there we go we do have a time bonus so if we do it in i believe it was under 32 minutes was it um uh, 32 minutes for the time bonus, so that should be hopefully achievable. Although we have spent about five or ten minutes, you know, making sure that we have got this in the right direction. Now that does actually matter, and it's mainly for cooling. If you don't have the front of the radiator here uh, facing the direction you're travelling, then the engine will actually overheat more. So that's all taken into account there. Quick look on the world map, seems to be a fairly straight run for now, so I am going to speed it up a bit. As I said, the speed in the game has been increased somewhat, so you can go a little bit faster without the train letting go. I haven't, at the m like, since coming back to the game, I haven't yet derailed anything, and I'm very happy with that, because obviously this is now a campaign where you have to keep track of damage and wear and repair and that sort of thing, and if you, if you have, say, a half a million load and you dump it on the side of the track then you've got insurance but you so you don't have to pay for it all but it is going to pretty much bankrupt you if it's very early on so there is the marker there so 11 does not say you can only do 11 it's in 10 so that's 80 that one back there was 11. This one underneath means the grade, so that is a level grade, so this is all the way there, and then you've got ones for an increased gradient and a downhill gradient as well. You also have left and right markers for switches that will show you the speed in which you can take those turns. So this is down to 5 uh, for both sides. So, oh, that's another sign there saying we're coming up to uh, uh, the point here and we're currently going 40 so yeah we're not actually breaking anything else there ah this is a bit of a problem now because it's saying left is three but straight off and right is five well we're going straight on and through this so there will be a yard speed but uh, I don't know what it is and we're just going straight on anyway so fly straight through this is the what was it the oil well central and you can see we now have all of these uh, these tankers here and these ones are the hazmat ones and you do get as said some hazmat uh, cars so it ranges from like oil and fuel and gas and you can see there's actually there's actually markers on there it's maybe difficult to see but you can see back there there's little placards on the side to say what sort of things they are so that whether they're explosive or toxic they can explode if you crash into them uh, and, and they will chain react so if this thing goes up you're taking pretty much the entire refinery with it so you just have to be very 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 careful it also requires another license to get that so it's hidden behind a, a license essentially it's, a, it's a rather it's um, gated behind a license you have to buy something that you can't really afford early on so it means you have to get used to the game before jumping into that which I think is a fairly sensible 
sensible decision. Anyway, we're travelling at just over 40 kilometres an hour here. We can see temperature is good, oil and fuel is also good. The marker here says 7, so we can do 70. The next one is 10, so I'll tell you what, we'll increase it just a little bit. This obviously is just empty cars. I didn't check the weight of it. I should probably check the weight of it on the... Uh is it as well. Check it on the job listing here and we can see that it is a train mass of 55 tons. So this actually really isn't a big uh, load at all for, for this loco. You see the train itself, you know, in the long distance is not fantastic, but it is a better looking game than it was previously. Uh, we've now got some trees, well, the trees don't, well, we still got things like that, where you've got uh, bits where you can see through the ground, but it's rare. You don't get big rocks on the on the ground, uh, or on the track, rather. That says five, and we're doing 55, so we'll have to reduce that speed a little bit. Don't worry, it won't just let go immediately uh, if you're going one mile an hour over, but, oh, this is a, actually quite a tight turn. I need to put a bit of brake on there, and you can you can hear it squealing just a little bit as we're going round. Uh, <laughs> I've managed to reduce the speed enough to get round the corner without any great calamity there, but... Uh, there we are. Yeah, as I said, uh, we've got... Oh, we've got actually a s switch coming up, and we need to go, I believe, to the left. But I'm just going to double-check world map. It is to the left, so take out the comms radio and switch that to the left. There we go. We can take this at 5, and we're currently doing about 28. So we should be able to take that without any great difficulty. Yeah, as I said, the... The game does uh, look a bit better, even I've got a lot more options for the settings. Still, you know, work to be done. Things like the jaggies there, it's a bit dodgy, and you've got, um, you know, I, I don't like the foliage on here. That doesn't uh, have any, I don't really have any problem with that, but um, sometimes the trees are a little bit close, but you don't get, like, trees sticking right up in the middle like you did previously. There was so many in uh, the previous builds and stuff. As you can see, we've got, like, the odd bush coming through there, but nothing, you know, totally game-breaking or anything like that. Uh, the new point says five, so what we'll do is we'll speed up a little little bit. Obviously, if you drive it at, say, 30 all the way to your location, then you'll get there. Don't worry, that's not a problem at all, but obviously we are looking for the time bonus. Now, that there says it is 4, and we are doing uh, 40. That's fine, but that is an uphill grade, so we'll keep an eye on our speed. We're doing 42, so that's fine. We can take that corner at 42. It's, like I say, it's not just going to let go if you're one mile an hour over there, but you can hear it squealing a little bit, so you do get an audible note there to say, you actually, you might want to slow down just a just a smidge. Uh, so we're going to do that. There we are. We've got some nice bluebells coming up. We've got all the different foliage. The towns themselves are a lot more populated. It dis does still feel an empty world. You don't have like NPCs or just people wandering around and working or any other animation like cranes moving and things like that. So it would be nice to see that sort of thing. Also, I would love to see this thing get co-op. I think it is on their to-do list, but it's been on the to-do list pretty much since there was a to-do list. Uh, <laughs> I think it was a community unlock thing, and it's only going to be two-player, if at all, and it's, I think it's recently been changed to, we'll try it, rather than it's definitely coming in, which is a little bit disappointing, because, um, well, actually, maybe not, because if this was co-op, I can honestly see me disappearing off the face of the earth, and um, just, you know, playing this game forever, but there you are. Uh, we've got... <laughs> As I said, some uh, nice water down the bottom, and I thought that was actually bird something, but it's actually just dirt on the window. Ugh. And that's his two. Okay, let's uh, reduce that down, put on the brake there, because that came out of nowhere, didn't it? And there we go. Things you can unlock, you can you can still buy things like the shovel and the lighter for your steam loco. You can have the train squeal like a wounded animal. Come on, head up the hill. And that's a very, very swaying tree. Yes, you got uh, the like the auto, not the auto driver, the the, the remote control for the locos. I think they're, urgent, they're eventually going to put the auto hook up in, but that's going to be uh, another unlock there. We're currently doing nearly 30, and we haven't actually seen another thing to tell us that we can go over 20 kilometers. So, yeah, looking at this corner, it's we're, we're taking a little bit of an aggressive speed, but that's not too much of an issue. I mean, this is uphill after all, so you can see that we are bleeding speed off, and the temperature is such that... Uh, probably put them on. Yeah, it's actually going up there. Nearly 90, but... yeah. If you run it too hot, it will end up damaging the loco. I mean, you'll have to do maintenance on it anyway. That's something you'll have to pay for, but there's so many of them all over the place, but you don't want to have loads of locos strewn all over it. <laughs> um, I've been playing it in VR mode uh, via Oculus uh, Rift S, and it's, uh, yeah, very, very playable. Obviously, better controls and that sort of thing. 
you can now fast travel to different locations using the world map although it does cost cash only issue I have had was I was running on Steam VR where I thought oh, I'll switch it to the oculus mode to see if the performance is better or worse or whatever just just trying to come compare them really and I seem to fall through the ground the controllers were all over the place they were like artifacting and I came back into desktop mode and my local had loads of smash windows which was um, no good so that was a thing <laughs> But anyway, these things may happen. We'll go outside. We can uh, hear the loco. Ooh, it's uh, mm, polluting. And you can see a bit of damage on there as well. Ah, looks like that's saying we can now go 40. So we will probably increase our speed. Although, let's check the map. We've got no, a couple more sharp corners coming up. So no point in speeding up just to then slow completely right down. Although, after that, there is a fairly straight one. So we will probably follow that. What we're doing, just under 20. Let's uh, speed up just a little bit. That says 30, so we can do 30. Mm, it's struggling to get there. I mean, obviously we are going uphill with 55 tonnes, but there you are. Not bad lake to the right of it. River, rather. River. Yeah, it would be nice to see things like wildlife and, and, and that sort of stuff. That would be fairly cool. Don't know if NPC, like, trains and things that are going to come in. Unlikely, I would assume, but perhaps wrongly. Another marker here saying 20 on this one, so a little dab of break. And you can see the controls themselves for for the game. You can tell they're built for VR, because you'd be you know using the hand controllers for these ones, but you know you can just quickly look at them and move them in, in desktop mode, not a problem at all. In terms of which one I prefer to play, I really couldn't tell you. VR is my deep is my gut instinct that I really prefer to play this in VR because, well, it's VR and it's a train game. So why wouldn't it be? But I don't know, in, in desktop mode, I do find it to be quite relaxing too. Not as fatiguing, I guess, is uh, is the better one. And certainly the way I would probably play it if we do more on the channel because it's just a bit better to watch, I think. Whereas in, in VR, it's like, you know, like stuttery and, you know, it's not smoothing and it looks like this and it, it's, you know, it's just, yeah. <laughs> It's, I don't think it's good to watch, but let us know, let us know. So coming up to a switch eventually, after this next corner here, which I think I will actually speed up to get past, we should have a fairly straight bit of track, which we can start to hammer down and make up some time after, obviously, that, that, that bit there. That says 8 with a downhill grade, so we're going to have to be careful here. Let's put it and see if we can do that 80. I think this thing can only go up to a maximum of 70 on max speed anyway, but I haven't actually tested it. I haven't done any sort of great speed test. Mainly because I want to keep it on the rails and not have to pay for re-railing the entire thing. Luckily, we've not got no cargo on this, so if we did derail it, we'd just have to pay for the cargo to, uh, the carriages to come back on. But that would wipe out all of the profit that we've made so far. That looks very dangerous. <laughs> Coming up to 50 there, and oh, we can see this is yeah actually going down to 50, so we're just going over that little dab of brakes. Going to 11 now, and we need to go left, I believe. Uh, oh, actually, is that true? Oh, hang on, uh, hang on, hang on. Oh, micro stutter, and now that's caused all manner of issues. Right, I think I might have switched that wrongly. Yes, I have. We should have went straight on. Okay, applied the brakes in time. Let's go back. Break off little power and we'll go back. So we could have actually flew straight through there without any problem, but I messed that one up. It's more calamitous in multiplayer when you're trying to grab the controls and you end up punching desks and, oh god, what's going on? And then you fly at the end of a bridge. Anyway, just back this up. Shouldn't be any great danger on this one. There we go. Gonna lose a couple of minutes. But no great problem. comms radio pass the switch flip the switch both brakes on I don't know if it stops faster with both I would assume so both brakes off and then we're gonna go that way if you go at max speed like that you get wheel slippage but you can put your sander on which in this case doesn't help because we're going so fast yeah, putting sand on will give you a lot more traction. And 
happened over there. It seems to be that it's when it's lowered in the area that you get those little uh, stutters, which is more jarring in VR, actually. When you go to the, the locations, it will spawn all of the carriages that are there and that sort of thing. So, if you leave and come back, it will respawn the carriages and the jobs that are there. So, there you are. Fairly looks to be a fairly smooth curve on this one, so we could probably take it at a decent speed. 70, that's saying there, with a downhill grade, so I'm going to reduce our speed to under half, because we'll probably end up speeding up. Good grief, that seemed a bit aggressive, but it seems to have turned alright. Speed is increasing. Slight dab of brake. That's now an uphill grade. Okay. Well, we're doing the we're doing the a lot of speed. Under the speed, actually. You can see we can feel actually feel the grade leveling out as well. And that says five. We're slowly going down, so I'll turn the brake off. A bit more power on the loco. We're trying to keep that momentum as we come down the hill. Obviously, a fine art to balance these and use the combination of brake throttle and the momentum of the train to get that best average speed. Something which I have not yet mastered. Doing just under 30, we can do 40 around this curve, but looking at the map, there's going to be a fairly harsh turn come up. We've got a little right, and then almost hairpin left, so... <laughs> have to make note of that. I just noticed there's a little hole in the uh, top of the loco too. Ooh, rain. the rain and weather will get in that one. Speaking of weather, it would be nice to see weather in day-night cycle. But in the future, perhaps. Perhaps. The main takeaway, basically, now is that uh, if you have played the game previously and you were struggling with the lack of elevation and speed markers that there are now in and it runs better and, yeah. Certainly the time to come back to the game, which is why I've been playing a lot on it. To the left here looks to be no extra markers for speed. Looking at the map, we can see that we got a left and then a right and then a very easy left, sorry, right to the sawmill. Let's check out the station map this time. So this is a fairly thick volume. Let's put that tome down there and good grief, it's like the Necronomicon. So we need to go to the sawmill which is uh, let's scroll through food factory, goods factory, harbour, Machine factory, coal mine, iron ore, forest, sawmill. So, this is what we're looking at. This is the overall map, and we can see the southeast and northwest entrances. We are approaching from this will be the southeast entrance, and that says five, so we're all okay. Um, so, let's have a quick look. This says we are approaching from the southeast, and we can see that there is a switch just before the different sections. We need to park this in the sawmill at saw, uh, this, oh, sorry, uh, yeah, sawmill for B1S. And if I check the station map, B is to the right and at the bottom there. So, when we come into the sawmill, we need to take a right. So, the documentation is also a lot improved, although I did find these, the documentation, let's uh, reduce that right down and get our commas radio because we need to go to the right and that should be it. That should be correct. And I'll put a little bit of brake on here. I'll put a lot of brake on. Okay. Yeah, the documentation itself has uh, it was I thought it was always okay, especially looking at the map and that sort of thing. But uh, this this station map is much much better. And B1S, which is I can see it's there. Oh, actually, it's already got some cars there, which is problematic. I mm, let me check. Nope, I cannot. Okay, so we will put that there forward, and we'll see if we can push these now. I don't know how the air brakes work. I mean, I fundamentally understand how air works and brakes work, but I don't know whether it's a case of the brakes are on if there's no air. Is it you pressurise to release the brakes? 
or is it the other way around? If it if it's the former, then those will have their brakes on, which means when I whack into them, they're just going to screech as I'm trying to push them. Another problem is I'm stranding this loco in between two lots of carriages. Now, as long as we're in the siding, I think we can technically hand the job in. But, for science, I want to see if we can push these. Don't want to hit it too hard. Well, it did move, but I expected it to. So let's see. It's moving. Yeah, I'm going to guess their brakes are on. <laughs> okay, well, we're technically in. Hmm. Yeah, technically, uh, we're, not, we're not really in. Okay, well, I'll see if we can hand the job in. Because if we can hand the job in, then, um, well, it's fine. Um, take a quick look at the sawmill, actually, because I've never been here. It's uh, actually quite good, as you might expect. Loads of logs uh, on the back of there. Loads of different cargoes. Like I say, it would be nice to have, like, it animating, and you can see, like, you know, the chimneys, like, working and you can hear sawmill no like, the sawmill noises and things like that uh, but anyway over to the station office here which is also being redone we will take out our job and validate it and no no we have not we've not put it in the siding um okay so i've lost my train let me just double check to make sure this is in the right place because that would be a bit disconcerting. Yeah, B1S. So this is the right place. So what I'll have to do is I'll connect up that to there. Do that. Tie the air brakes on and on. And... Oh, that's fine. Uh, you heard the noise there, that, that bell ring. That is the... Uh, that is the alert on here. But I'm guessing it's because we lost brake pressure when I connected all these up. So I don't know if this is standard procedure to <laughs> have the loco push all of these. We need to get past that marker, I'm guessing. And I don't know how long that is. That should be about right. Look to be about past that. Brakes on. Hop out of a moving train, because that's how you get the film unstoppable. And let's see if we can hand this job in. Uh, wrong one. And there we go. Job complete. 28 minutes, so we did manage to get the time bonus with 4 minutes to spare. And base payment is 6,066. Uh, mm -hmm. The devil's work. And let's go along. We can see time bonus. So it was 6,066 generic units of currency. We got 3,033 for our time bonus. So total payment of 9,099p. Uh, summary is well done, and that is damage. So, if there was no damage made to the Diva Valley property or the environment, and then you see the environment is no damage. If you cause some damage to like the wheels, or if you shunted it too hard, or did what, whatever to cause damage, or even derailed it, then it would show you what that is there. So that has been complete. This is oh, lost and found as well, and also a, a skip here. I will put that in there because I don't think I need it. I also don't need that job report, and. There you go, that is one little job to the sawmill, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that we have that off, and there we go, job done. Obviously we need to detach these and get that out somehow, I don't know how we'd be able to do that. Let's have a quick look around to see if there's any, any other locos here, I don't think there is. You see I'm using the quick sort of travel teleporty thing here, but you can fast travel to other locations. Um, no, doesn't look like there are any other any other locos here. What I'm going to do is open up the map and I'm going to show you... Oh, actually, yeah, I'll go to the world map and we'll hold Alt so we can access that. That's actually our home. We've got like a little siding and a little shack as well for ourselves. We're actually going to fast travel to the harbour in town. Fast travel... Oh, hang on, let's see. Uh, how much does that cost? Uh, there, fast travel, three grand. Uh, yeah, for the sake of showing you, we might as well travel over here. And we'll see just how big this place is. It is quite a large area. Okay, so we're now at the harbour and we can see we have like a massive tanker there, huge um, like 
like oil and gas stuff over there. We've got like the cranes and loads of cargo containers and shipping containers. The main bulk of it is obviously all these like you got loads of like these blocks here, very brutalist architecture. Uh, we've also got like lo loads of different locos and wagons and stuff. I mean, if I just <laughs> the main takeaways, if we go back to here, uh, food factory. No, it is the harbor. It's it's got multiple pages. There's the overview, and then each one of those A B C D and what has got their own. <laughs> their own listing in here so it is absolutely colossal this place uh, i'm trying to find i think we have to go around this way perhaps it's very easy to get lost in this place i mean here's a load of big part of the yard loads of different car containers i like that they've got different um <laughs> they've got different like um symbols and like weathering and damage and uh, different names on them as well. Here's some like heavy plant there. We got some diggers. We've also got what's this like a oh, it's like a petrol station type thing. You've got like little cars over here, which do, are very mini compact cars certainly. Uh, I think it is this way. Yes, it is this way. We can see we've got there's just one of the shunting locos there. A little boat on the side. Cool. And this is the place I wanted to go to. So this is the engine shed, and we can see we've got one, two three of the uh, shunting locos we've got the uh was it sh282 yeah this is our steam locomotive which is a nightmare to drive on your own and we've got a turntable so you can put the loco on there and put the engine on there and you can turn the entire thing which is cool i thought there was going to be a new the new diesel that's here as well but uh, sadly there is not but essentially that's uh, the one you probably want to get for the next one I think it's actually double the cost of that but obviously a lot more labor intensive when you drive the local into here you also have all of these which are light up so engines wheels a body coal water oil sand and diesel so you'll have to actually fuel all of these up and uh, repair it and you know make sure you maintain the local but there you are that is a little bit of Hmm, this which has actually been uh, scrapped and derailed. A little bit of derail valley. As I said, overhauled very much, I think, what they want to accomplish with a with a sort of 1.04 um, early access. Still, as I said, not finished, and there's still some problems here and there and such, but very much a massive update and the one that would, well, has certainly got me back into the game if you have played in the past and were worried about some of the issues then maybe they have gone either way you can check the link out in the description to check the game out yourself and uh, maybe hire a reglazer while we're at it if you want to see more then by all means let me know whether it be in desktop mode or vr i did plan on doing a series of this at some point too but it would probably be in this mode but for now i'm just playing it enjoying it and looking forward to uh, seeing what we have in the future as always if we have enjoyed the video <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. Comments and comments. Take care and generic partings.